Welcome lure enthusiasts. If this is your first time here and you enjoy lure making videos, please subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. This is a lure I've been thinking about doing for quite some time, but I had a subscriber bring it up in a comment and kind of got the ball rolling on it and got me interested in it. So I kind of brought that up to the top of my list. But uh, I took a trip to Florida not too long ago and we went to this, uh, I guess it's a aquatic zoo kind of place. Uh, and they had North American alligators in this pen. So I was able to take a lot of pictures of those and get a good look at them. Um, so I have those as a reference that I'm using on this. This is a 16 inch long alligator lure, obviously. Uh, you can see I've got the arms and the legs folded up tight against the body. I think it'll just have a much better action that way. So the biggest uh, piece of basswood I was able to find is a two inch by three inch by 12 inch piece, which is not going to be long enough for this lure. So uh, I'm gonna get two of these pieces and I'm going to join them together with sort of a tongue and groove configuration here just to give it some additional strength. I've also got my groove right here so that it'll wind up being in the, the meaty part of the tail.
So I've cut a piece of wood here into kind of a funnel shape and I'm going to place that right here. And I'm also using uh, some toothpicks that I've cut down to make some sprues. As you can see, I've filled that little gap with some clay and uh, I'm ready to mix up my silicone. I've got a little bit of this silicone left over, this Let's resin that I've got linked in the description. I'm going to finish this off for this half of the mold. I don't really need to measure since uh, I'm just going to be using all of it. So I poured a really thin layer over the whole thing and you can see that what we're doing is we're letting those bubbles rise up out of that and pop. We'll let that sit for about 15 minutes and then we'll come back and pour in the rest. After I removed the clay, I cleaned up this half. Uh, you can see I've added a, another cone on this side to complete my funnel. And I put petroleum jelly on all the silicone with a brush. And then I sprayed a mold release over the rest. And as before, we're going to let that set for about 15 minutes and then we'll come in and pour the rest after all the bubbles have popped. So it's been a little over 24 hours. This should have had plenty of time to set up. Uh, I did notice that pretty early on my funnel wedge broke loose and floated to the top, so I picked it out of there. Uh, it's not a huge deal, it just means that I'm going to have to carve that funnel uh, once I remove this from the mold. So let's pull this out of there and see what we've got. Looks like we've got a pretty nice top half. Looks like we've got a pretty nice bottom half too. Won't know until I pour one, but uh, looks pretty good from here. All right, now that I got this piece finished, I'm going to make a mold of the remaining pieces and then I'll get back with you uh, so that we can cast one of these things.
Okay, that's supposed to sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll figure out what we got. Nice. Really nice. Pretty happy with that. Now there's a there's going to be a seam down the side and I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit, but I think that is a pretty good copy. Very happy with that and it turned out pretty nice on the first pour, which usually I have problems with that, but maybe this smooth on is a little bit uh, more forgiving than what I've been using. Great. Well, we'll cast the rest of these and put it together and then we'll see how it uh, does in the water. We'll have to do some uh, ballasting and all that sort of stuff to get this just right before we move on to painting. But uh, I think this is a really excellent start. I'm very, very happy with that casting. This stage what I want to do is epoxy in the line tie and this front hook hanger. I've made the hardware for the joint but I'm not going to epoxy that in right now. I'm just going to leave it in kind of as a tension fit um, because I'm going to want to clear coat this and paint it and all that kind of stuff and then do the joint at the very very end. So I'm just going to push those in for now but I'm not going to epoxy those. thinking I'm going to need to add a whole lot of weight to this at all. See if it can... It can pretty much right itself unless it just lands dead flat on its back. I mean, that looks kind of right to me. The amount of above water versus below water. I think I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of weight in the back here. I think I might try one of these 5 8 inch ones right about there. There we go. That kind of levels the back. The back end was just a little bit high. I feel like that levels it a little bit, and I think it'll probably improve the... Uh, yeah, turns, fixes that problem where it always writes itself there now. Even if it lands straight on its back, it'll write itself. So we'll just put a little touch of weight right, right there in the back. And the great thing about using hot glue is that I can just pop these little weights off without damaging the surface. And it allows me to try different locations um, before I do any drilling. It's a pretty handy little technique. I think I'm going to start with kind of a creamy yellow. Uh, I think I'll mix some opaque white and some opaque yellow to get the color I'm wanting. And I've got an extra bottle here that I'm going to mix that up in. That way I have plenty if I need to come back and use it later on. And then I've also got some uh, thinner if I uh, 
need to get it thinned down a little bit for the airbrush. All right, I've worked it down little by little until I think I've got the right color that I'm looking for. So we've got it, we've got it mixed. It's a very, very light yellow, and I think that'll be perfect for our starting point. The next color I'm seeing in there is a little bit darker, like a, a brown kind of color along the back that fades into the lighter colored yellow. So I'm gonna use a really light transparent brown. Uh, just mist it over that, just to give it that little bit of variance in color. That's about how much I want on there. I don't even care if it's a little bit splotchy, I think that's okay. Uh, we're going to hand paint over this whole thing, but that just gives me a nice little base color uh, to start with. This next step, um, I've honestly never done before, but I'm going to use a technique called washing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix down a really thin, dark color. I'm going to use uh, opaque black and a little bit of bright green and some water. And I'm going to thin this down into a wash so that when I paint it over this, it all settles down in the little detail cracks there and really gives me a lot of depth on my painting. Okay, I've done, a, I've done this piece obviously so that you can see the difference. It just really, it really gets into those cracks and gives it a lot of depth. Adds a little bit more realism. This one's just pretty flat looking. I mean, it's, it's cool, it's got lots of shadow and everything, but this really makes it pop, especially at a distance. When we look at the dark portions of this alligator, it almost looks black, but uh, I didn't really want to go solid black on that because I don't think it would look correct. Um, what I'm going to do is make a very dark green and the mixture I've come up with looks like this. It's a mixture of equal parts of Wicked Detail Moss Green, Wicked Detail Raw Umber, uh, Transparent Bright Green, and Transparent Light Brown. Now these may not be the best colors uh, to use because it is kind of thin and it requires me to put multiple coats on, but it is what I have. I didn't run out and buy a custom uh, set of colors for that. So you could probably find a custom color that will achieve the same thing that's a little bit thicker. These alligators that I have pictures of are a little bit older than the ones I'm trying to carve. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to carve a kind of a baby alligator, so it's got a little bit more distinct striping on it uh, than these pictures. So I may stray from it a little bit when I paint my actual lure.
I've got a mix of this uh, pearl, satin, gold, and some of my alligator green that I mixed. And blending those together. Let's see what that looks like for an eye. It's a nice eye color. I'm ready to put a clear coat on this thing and I'm going to use this True Coat Epoxy. I've had really good luck with it. I am a little bit concerned that it's going to be a little too glossy for this particular lure, but at the same time I do want to get a good shell of protection on it. All right, I've pulled this off the rotisserie and I've got to be honest with you, as soon as I started brushing that clear coat on, I knew I wasn't going to be happy with the results. And I think the problem with this clear coat is that it's too shiny for one thing and for another, it fills in all of that texture that uh, I carved on here. It will provide a much more durable lure. So for a lure that you're going to fish a lot, you need a good clear coat on it. But since I made a mold for this thing, I'm going to probably cast up another one at some point and I'm going to explore some matte clear coats that I can put on this thing and maybe some that aren't so thick that won't uh, interfere with the texture so much. However, having said that, I think this is going to fish just as well. Uh, I know that once these lures hit the water, the clear coat really doesn't matter from a standpoint of what it looks like in the water. They look the same. And so this is going to fish just as well as uh, if it had a matte finish on it. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.